What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Worry Port here on Eagle Range. This is battle number one, finally, April 2nd, 2024. It's been a rough start, but we finally got a, a war out the door, so this is good. War number one was one where we fought over a very few amount of thieves. There's not a whole lot that's unlocked at this level of the, the game, so uh, it is kind of tight quarters. So it's going to be really interesting to show you just how many people were actually on this battlefield even with the very few thieves that we have. Before we get started, I need to cover some key terms. Prestige is the value of the land that you own. A claim is a total amount of prestige you earn across the course of the season. Renown is a change in your property value. And Triumphs is the end of season prize money we're all fighting for. Next up, we're going to take a look at some upcoming events. All right. So, Eve of the Storm. This is technically phase two. We didn't even have a phase one, so all those looking forward to blue season, sorry. There was no blue season. I hope you had fun the first two weeks because we didn't have any wars. Uh, battle number two, April 6th. That's this Saturday. We're going to see some house level fives. That's going to open up a whole new batch of thieves, um, and you'll be able to take those. Next time that we see a level up on those houses is level six on battle number four, April 13th. So, you're going to have a little road ahead before you actually get into some of those fiefs. Some of those in Mao Yang aren't going to open up until later in the season, so just sit tight, enjoy the land that you have, and if you have horse nodes, cha-ching, cha-ching. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the new battle summary. Here we go. 54 houses. 54 houses is what we had on the battlefield tonight. 13 alliances fighting over 86 fiefs. There's a total of 20,695 prestige on the board. Over on Mel Yang, they have a medium-sized slice of the pie with 6,045 prestige. Total of 26 fiefs being fought over. 42% is cohorts. Uh, Zubo is first of the houses with 19%. Then Revenant, Forces of Chaos, down there with a 3%. Over in Liang Yun, we had 11th. 
6,200. Now, this was a region that had 38 thieves available. More thieves than anywhere else in the world. Art of D's got 24%. Long Tang Rangers, Long Tong Rangers, sorry, uh, 15%. Jade Empire with 13%. Forces of Chaos with 6%. Zubo with the 5%. Over in Long Ting, 3,450 prestige. Total fiefs were 22. Osworn got 65% of that. Hibernia with 13%. The cohorts have 9%. And Animal Kingdom with 9%. Next up, we are going to slide on over to the War for An Liang. This is Mao Yang. And check it out. It's a sad place. Look at these civilians. They are just miserable. Now, over the course of the season, you can make these little peasants happy. They can become very happy peasants if you do some thief quests and build up this property and make it glorious. Now that prestige bar down there at the bottom shows that you are a prosperity tier one. It's devastated. There are four total towns being fought over tonight. 22 villages. 6,045 is the regional prosperity. Um, you're looking at 195 over the baseline. Uh, so we did see some upgrades between the start of the season and now, but not much. We're going to start seeing that a little later. So the biggest landowners right now is Mao Yang Legion with 13,260 total prestige. Noble is second with 1,170. Monarch in third, 780. Bandits with 390. And then Barbarians with 390. We don't have any builders this early in the season. It is a 58% free houses versus 42% legion basis. We have two rank four strongholds with Mumbai and Zaifu. In the village category, everything is level one. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these befores and afters. Here's where we were at the start of the war. Here's where we are at the end of the war. So yeah, quite a bit changed, but the cohorts still have a pretty good sizable chunk of land here. Looking at the changes, we saw Barbarians gain 1, Monarch gain 2, Noble with 6, Bandits with 2, Vigilantes with 1, Praetorian Guard with 1, Lawless with 1, and Unity with 1. Now, looking at the arist aristocracy of Mao Yang. The Emperor right now is the Mao Yang Legion. Underneath that, we have the Regional Barons of Noble with 1,170. Underneath that, we have the Regional Stewarts with Monarch, Barbarians, Bandits, Unity, Praetorian Guard, Lawless, and Vigilantes. Now, if we're looking for the race for the capital, nobody's even going to be in the hunting yet because there's not enough points on the board to even warrant being called in the hunt. So, looking at the Rising Kingdoms, we didn't see anything. Looking in the Crumbling Empires, we didn't see anything, but nobody owned anything last week, so, you know. Unit kits, nothing. This is going to be a really rough zone because there isn't a lot of fiefs that are high level to begin with, so there's not a lot of crafting. So it's going to be really rough before that gets there. If you're looking to craft siege weapons, Desert Edge has the well-made watch air launchers, well-made mortars, Keef Commune with the well-made cannons, well-made mortars, Nightingale Town with the well-made ballista, well-made mortar. Now, if you're looking for thief quests, we do have some of those. Mumbai has a 10 rare Rebel Cavalry kits for 3,300, as does Zaifu. Top honor gains goes to Mumbai with one Epic Artillery for 660 honor. Top house EXP, many of you were still grinding the house EXP. Zaifu has 100 regional exotics for 220. You can also drop off 100 regional exotics at Kongshi, Yunlai, and Kamen. If you are in Mao Yang wondering where you get your regional exotics, that would be the tree nodes and the iron nodes. Next up, we're going to slide on over to the war for Dai Chang. This is Liang Yun, just south of Mao Yang. Here you go. These peasants are slightly happier because Liang Yun actually starts slightly built up. So it is a poor rating. It's not quite great, but it's at least not sad and miserable and bleak. Uh, so we have 92% free houses, 8% legion of this stuff that is takeable at this point. Nine towns, one fort and 28 villages were on the board today to be fought over. Uh, that's 11,200 prosperity total. Uh, so Liang Yun Legion has 5,900 of that. Gaia with 1,350. Art of War with 1,350. Shockers, 1,100. I-Team with 900. If we're looking for the most prestigious strongholds, you have North, Hebo, uh, Godoa, Healy, and Yun Sing. I think there's actually a fifth, but I'm, or a sixth, um, but I'm forgetting which one it was. In the flourishing villages, we have uh, Dei, Jandai, Jingdong, or Jinggong, Yumi, and Yingma. 
Now, if you want me to pronounce things right, please meet with me and let me know how to say something because I do not pronounce anything right. That is a given. All right, so here's where we were at the beginning. Now, you notice, Mao Yang, half the region was locked away. This region, everything's available. Like, there's only a few fiefs here that are not available right out the gate. So here you go before, and there you go after. Looking at the battles, there was quite a few. Art of War with two, Shockers with three, Gaia with two, Black Templars with one, Vanguard with two, I-Team with three, Infamous with one, Dorandon with one, Dauntless with one, Stack, Stack three with four, Unity with two, Homegrown with two, Atlas with two, Speak with one, Here with two, uh, Sir Dukar with one, Mortality with one, Death Guard with one, Immortal QC with one, Odin with one, and Soda with one. I believe I said Mortality with one. All right, so looking at the aristocracy of Liang Yun, there you go. The Liang Yun Legion is the current king of Liang Yun. Underneath them, they have the three barons of Gaia, Art of War, and Shockers. Below that, we have our regional stewards of I Team, Stack 3, Vanguard, Infamous, Durandon, Black Templars, Unity, Atlas, Homegrown, Here, Death Guard, Dauntless, uh, Sardukar, Sardukar, I think is how you'd pronounce it. Immortal QC, Speak, Odin, Soda, and Mortality. Looking at the race for the capital, we don't quite have anyone on the board in, in the running yet, but we will uh, we'll have someone there soon, no doubt. Looking at the Rising Kingdoms, there we go. Nothing growing this war. We'll see a couple losing kingdoms here, so two of these drop to one. That's hard when a thief flips twice in a single war, it's going to downgrade. Not much you can do about it. Looking at the unit kits, there are no unit kit crafting stations here in Liang Yun quite as of yet. If you're looking for siege crafting, you have Fort Peacock with well-made cannon, well-made watch air launcher, well-made mortar. You have Zhang's estate with well-made ballista, well-made watch air launcher, well-made mortar. Zhao's manor, well-made cannon, well-made ballista, and well-made mortar. If you're looking for thief quest, North has two barbs for 3,300 player XP. Looking for house on or total honor, Healy has the one epic artillery, as does North for 660. Top house EXP gains, Hebo, 100 regional exotics will get you 220. Next up, we're going to take a look over at Haojing. Now this place, this place is really sad. So everything in this region starts as level 1. Like everything. There is a total of 3,450 regional prosperity available in this region. That's how, how sad everything is when it starts. Like, literally, it has zero points on the board right now. Nothing's level 2. All the strongholds are level 1. All the villages are level 1. Uh, Longting Legion owns pretty much 6,150 prestige worth of land right now. The Fallen with 1,950. Initiative with 300. Undying Wolves with 300. And Goshkia with 150. Now, looking at the war before, this is all we were fighting over. I believe it was 21 villages. Pretty sure it was 21 villages. And then that's what it was after. Looking at the changes, we saw the Fallen with 13, Silly Fellas with 1, Goshke with 1, Undying Wolves with 2, Initiative with 2, Goshke Farmers with 1, and Goshke Dub with 1. Looking at the houses of Long Ting, we have the Long Ting Legion as the king. The Barons are the Fallen of Oathsworn. Then followed are the Stewarts of Initiative, Undying Wolves, Silly Fellas, Goshke Farmers, Goshke, and Goshke Dub. Looking for the race for the capital city. Now, for the regional influence, please do not take House Rank 10 and House Regional Influence 10,000 yet. That is a placeholder because the game doesn't tell me what it needs to be yet. As soon as I know the real information, it's going to swap in there. I just don't want people thinking that they were in range and they weren't. So I'd rather set the bar really high and lower it as I gain the information that we need. Looking at Rising Kingdoms, there were none. Looking at Crumbling Empires, when you're at the bottom, there's nowhere else to fall. Unit Kits, there are none. Now, if you're looking for siege craft, there are two places in this whole region that will allow you to craft one siege weapon apiece. Fort Liang, Xingzai, with the well-made Culvern, and then however you pronounce the Heinz Ketchup with well-made Scorpio. Now, looking at the Thief Quests, Fufeng... With two barbs for 3,000. That's a really good quest. 
Uh, Wong Kiagan has it as well with the two barbs. That's a super easy quest. If you need horses, look towards the north side of Long Ting. There is a crap ton of horse nodes up there. That is what I refer to as the gold mine. If you are not up in that north area and you're in Long Ting, you're doing it wrong. Uh, that is where all the money's at. Those horse nodes will pay you more than you can... Like, if you had the entire southern half, if you had just two of those nodes, you'd still earn more than you would on that southern end. Uh, so the top honor gains, Fort Warsun with the 10 rare rebel cavalry kits. Uh, you can also drop them off at Linky. Top house EXP, everywhere that has regional exotics in the region. Lubai, Fufang, Yezhou Pass, etc, etc, etc. There's pretty much tons of villages that have it. I only calculated the ones that are closest to the capital and the big fiefs. So I didn't go through all the villages. Next up, we are going to go on to tonight's raffle. You guys know what to type. Start typing, start typing it. Come on. Now with the newcomer's gift, I'm also going to give you another code for something else that's special. But it's going to be a mystery. You're going to have to find out for yourself. I didn't really feel like it would be a good raffle by itself. But I felt it would be a good raffle to be accompanying something else. So I'll give you that one as well. There you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. And if there are any first timers out there, please do me a solid and follow the channel. I do stream Conqueror's Blade quite a bit. I do the War Report every Tuesday and Saturday. And I do stream some other games as well. I am sitting as of the start of this broadcast at 2,999 followers. Like, one more, I swear. It's just like, oh, thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> it sucks when you're just right at the finish line. You can't cross it. It's just like, ah! Thank you so much, Press 10. All right. I think we're good. Let's, let's go on a roll. Let's go on a roll. Congratulations to Mana Surge. You're tonight's winner. I will shoot you the code after the stream. Please make sure that Twitch messaging is turned on so I can send you your, your winnings. I don't want it to sit there and la la land and never get to you. All right, so next up is the rankings now. When it comes to top thieves, I don't have anything here because nothing's been upgraded yet to the level of four or higher. So we're going to have to wait until we get some level fives before this starts showing up. I'll probably rotate it out until we do. But, you know, if we're looking at house rankings... Here we go. Silly Fellas. That's the new house of the season. We've had a lot of returning houses. Silly Fellas is the first one that was a brand new house. Now we're looking at houses by level. Check this out. Look at how many houses made to level 4. I mean, everyone woke up this season and they're like, we're going. We're going all the way this time. Fallen, uh, Art of War, Gaia, Shockers, I-Team, Stack 3, Monarch, Vanguard, Durandon, Black Templars, Unity, Barbarians, Bandits, Homegrown, Initiative, Atlas... Undying Wolves, Lawless, Vigilantes, Mortality, Gashkia Dub, Gashkia Speak, Odin, Death Guard, Immortal QC, Khan, and the Notoriety Club, all level 4. Level 3 houses, we have Noble here, Praetorian Guard, Sedukar, uh, Dauntless, Soda, Savages, C. House level 2, Sally Fellas, Muramasa, Birds of Prey, Lionheart, and Sea Serpents. Looking at population gains, Infamous was the big winner this week with 62 grown from where we saw them last. Praetorian Guard with 34, Unity with 18, Odin with 14, Monarch with 10, Bandits with 8, The Fallen with 7, Durandon with 7, Initiative with 6, I Team with 5. In the population decline category, we sp saw Speak shed 8, Death Guard shed 5. Top gains of the night go to The Fallen with 13, Noble with 6, Stack 3 with 4, I-Team with 3, Shockers with 3, Unity with 3, Art of War with 2, Atlas with 2, Bandits with 2, and Gaia with 2. Looking at our top 10, we have The Fallen up top of Oathsworn with 1,950 prestige. Level is 4, McGee's Liege, population is 88. Seasonal claim of 1,950, a renown of 0, property value of 65 triumphs. And my cat says hi. Second place, we have Art of War with Jade Empire with 1,350 prestige. Level is 4. Dealer for Life is a Leash. Population is 98. Seasonal claim of 1,350. Renown of 0. Property value of 70 triumphs. In third place, we have Gaia with Art of D's. 1,300 
and 50 prestige. Level is 4, AMP Blackwing is a leash. Population is 99. Seasonal claim of 1,350. That's wrong. And then Renown is 0. Property value of 70. Maybe it's right. It is right. Next up, 4th is Noble with 1,170 prestige. Level is 3, Nathan Reiner is the liege, population is 34, seasonal claim of 1,170, renown of 0, property value of 30 triumphs. Next up in 5th place we have Shockers with 1,100 prestige, level is 4, Yacht is the liege, population is 77, seasonal claim of 1,100, renown of 0, property value of 55 triumphs. Next up in 6th place we have I-Team of Long Tong Rangers. 900 prestige, level is 4, i me head bill is the leash, population is 100, seasonal claim of 900, renown of 0, property value of 40 triumphs. Next up in 7th place we have Stack 3 with 800 prestige, level is 4, Jasmine's leash, population is 88, seasonal claim of 800. Renown of zero, property value of 40 triumphs. Bringing up that eighth place, we have Monarch of Zhu Bao. That is 780 prestige, level is four, Eric the Penguin's Liege. Population is 100, seasonal claim of 780. Renown is zero, property value of 30 triumphs. Bringing up ninth place, we have Vanguard of Long Tong Rangers. 750 prestige, level is 4. Tong Tong is a leash, population is 96. Seasonal claim is 750. Renown of 0, property value of 35 triumphs. Alright, and 10th place, we have Infamous of Art of D's with 750 prestige, level is 1. I'm in the Sky is a leash, population is 80. Seasonal claim of 750, renown of 0, property value of 40 triumphs. Bring us around to our top 30. There you are. Go ahead and find yourself. Write your mom. Let her know what you rank. There you go. All right. Going to move along. Next up, we're taking a look at the historical claim board. Now, a lot of houses are back again this season. We're going to see a lot of progress. We're going to see some of these houses over on the far right side creep their way to the far left side whole lot of players on the field right now so we'll we're gonna see how many shake out it's gonna be interesting to see what houses survive and which houses die um, looking at top builders there is none casualties there shouldn't be any so we're gonna jump right on over to the Alliance rankings here we go so free agents got quite a few of them noble shockers stack three bandits atlas lawless sardukar silly fellas and odin all looking for alliances right now Taking a look at the alliance changes. I bet you aren't used to seeing this many alliance changes, but Art of War joined Jane, Jade Empire. Barbarians jo joined Zubao. Black Templars joined Zubao. Continental Departed Deliverance. Durandon joined Art of D's. Gaia joined Art of D's. Initiative joined Osworn. I Team joined Long Tong Rangers. Lawless Departed Shadowfall Legion. Monarch joined Zubao. Um, Mortality joined Jade Empire, Shockers departed Inglorious, Stack 3 departed Shadowfall Legion, The Fallen joined Oathsworn, Unity joined Forces of Chaos, and Vanguard joined Long Tong Rangers. Alright, so, looking at the Alliance gains and losses, we had Oathsworn gaining 15, Long Tong Rangers with 5, Forces of Chaos with 5, Zubao with 4, Arda D is 4, No Evil with 3, Maelstrom with 3, Hibernia with 3, Jade Empire with 3, and Revenant with 2. Taking a look at those top 10 alliances, Art of D's is number 1 with 2,700. They had 4 towns with 2,700 total seasonal claim. Renown is 0, property value of 140 tramps, population is 269. Infamous is the lead with Gaia and Durandon at their side. Bringing up second place, we have Oathsworn with 2,250 prestige. 
Seasonal claim of 2,250, renown of zero, property value of 75 triumphs, population is 181. The Fallen is a lead with initiative at their side. In third place, we have none other than Zuba with 1,770 prestige. Seasonal claim of 1,770, renown of zero, property value of 80 triumphs, population is 296. Black Templars is the lead with Monarch and Barbarians at their side. Next up in fourth place, we have Long Tong Rangers with 1,650 prestige, seasonal claim of 1,650, renown of zero, property value of 75 triumphs. Population is 196. I team is a lead with Vanguard at their side. Next up, we have number five, Jade Empire, 1,500 prestige, seasonal claim of 1,500, renown of zero, property value of 75 triumphs, population is 197, Art of War is elite with mortality at their side. Bringing up sixth place, we have none but Forces of Chaos. 845 prestige, 845 seasonal claim, renown of zero, property value of 30 triumphs, population is 217, Death Guard is the lead with Unity and Soda at their side. Next up in that 7th place slot, there we are, Maelstrom with 450 prestige, seasonal claim of 450, renown is zero, property value of 15 triumphs, population is 292, the Nundariety Club is elite with Homegrown and Immortal QC at their side. Next up in 8th place, we have Hibernia with 450 prestige, seasonal claim of 450, renown of zero, property value of 15 tramps, population is 223. Goshkia is a lead with Goshkia Dub and Goshkia Farmers at their side. In ninth place, we have No Evil with 450 prestige. Seasonal claim of 450, renown of zero, property value of 15 tramps, population is 274. Speak as a lead with hear and see at their side. Then next up in 10th place, we have Revenant with 390 prestige. Seasonal claim of 390. Renown of zero, property value of 10 triumphs, population is 188. Vigilantes is the lead with Praetorian Guard at their side. That brings us around to our seasonal claim board. There you are. Art of D's is leading the pack with 2,700, followed by Osworn, 2,250. Zubao, 1,770. Long Tong Rangers with 1,650. Jade Empire, 1,500. Forces of Chaos, 845. Hibernia, 450. Maelstrom 450, No Evil with 450, Revenant 390, Animal Kingdom 300, Deuce Volt with 150, and Cohen with 0. Take a look at that historical acclaim board real quick. There you have it. Got a whole lot of alliances that we had last season that ended up folding. Um, so we have a lot of openings over there on the far left side. So we're going to see some brand new alliances form up. If you look at this board, you see, what, four on the left column, one in the, the second column, one in the third column, two in the... Fourth column, and nobody in the fifth column. So it's pretty much all new alliances creeping up this board this season. Should be an interesting one. I do hope that you enjoyed the changes I made. This has been the War Report. You can learn more about the War Report at gseh.info slash War Report. I have changed that page as well, and I'm actually working on something really cool that I hope to show you a little later this season, but it's going to be awesome. So I really hope that you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out your fiefs. You can see complete historical analysis of each fief. It's a good time. In any case, enjoy the credits. I know you always love it. So here you go.